One, two, one, two. Now here we go. You know what time it is? Welcome to another episode of the Frankie Lee Podcast. Our mission to empower others to break patterns, flip perspectives, so that together we have clarity, direction, and success way beyond what we ever previously thought possible. Here's your host, Frankie Lee. Yes, yes, yes. We are back. And in the house today, we have Mr. Jason Pacino himself. And we're going to be talking about all things personal finance and investing. He's a YouTuber. He's a successful investor. And he's going to drop some absolute knowledge bombs on the podcast today. I have no doubt about that. Mate, welcome to the podcast. And the first thing I want to drop in and talk about is your journey to becoming a full-time investor. Wow. All right. Deep questions first. But thank you for having me. No worries. Thanks for, for getting on here. My journey. I want to go straight in with it because there's so much value that I know we're going to drop on the back end. I want to get this journey in first, you know. Give a bit of background, yeah. Well, I guess you could come back to your intro talking about breaking patterns and looking at finance and investing. That's kind of where I started. I, I wasn't necessarily conscious of the patterns I was developing through my, my money journey. Yeah, yeah. But when it came down to it, as I've gone along the process, there are so many ingrained patterns that I've had to break along the way in order to become, you know, quote unquote, some sort of, some sort of successful in the space. Yeah, like financially free and Correct. Like be able to have your time back and everything like that. Exactly. What was one of the biggest patterns that you noticed that you had to break oh. first to like really move the needle? One of them that I think came up today, especially in some YouTube comments, was becoming a victim. And so that victim headspace that you're like, well, uh, I'm going to rely on someone else and then I'm going to follow their signals. And if that doesn't happen and that, that uh, you know, investment doesn't go well, then it's their fault. You know, so like that was something early on. I learned that very quickly. It's like everything is up to me. And if I'm going to make a success of this, then it's going to come back to me as well. Yeah, so it all, it all falls, falls at your door. A lot of people don't like to take responsibility for everything that happens to exactly. them. Exactly. Yeah. It, just, it just puts them in this like analysis paralysis type of environment. Yeah, yeah. The analysis paralysis is a big one that I learned during it as well. So, you know, getting over the victim thing and they're like, well, if I'm going to get over victimhood, then I have to do all the research myself. I've got to figure everything out. I've got to understand it before I invest in it. Kind of, you know, if you're in any other space, you know, with health or obviously finance and things that you're learning – as I got through that, you're like, well, crap, I'm never going to be able to make an investment if I keep doing all of this study. At some point, you've got to take the, the trade. At some point, you've got to put some money on the line and then wait to see what the result is. And, and do you know what? Schools don't teach you anything about money. So you literally yeah. leave school and you've got no idea. You've got no idea at all what, what to do. Like, yeah, you've, you've saved money and teaching. But obviously, saving money is not just the ideal thing, is it? Because you obviously, but no one teaches you to invest in school. No, no even mentions investing. Well, and you don't even get the opportunity to fail because if you fail, it's wrong. Whereas in investing, you have to fail in order to learn. And so, you know, it's like your, your intro, like breaking patterns. You can continue going through losses. You have to break a pattern in yeah. order to learn. So the failing equals learning. So the failing is kind of good in the sense. Yeah, because obviously, yeah, it, it's, and it's just like failing small at the start. So it's like putting little investments yeah. together, failing small rather than going and getting whacked for 30K every time. You know what exactly. Yeah, People yeah. Do it. Did you like, when you started, obviously, did you did you take on a mentor to obviously in regards to you like getting this personal finance? Yeah. Or? Look, yeah, I guess it's people who would read, read books, online, all the, the typical stuff. And then you kind of go through that journey where you get to a point that you're like, well, I'm, I've got this far. Can I get any further, any quicker, especially when you're early 20s and you've got all this energy to succeed and do better than everyone else, this whole ego thing comes about. Um, so, you know, I did take on some uh, trading coaches and stuff like that so that you could learn from their mistakes. But ultimately, you end up making the same mistakes regardless of who you learn from. You have to go through that journey. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. Did you ha did you start by like trading foreign 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 exchange like FX currencies, or did you start by trading st uh, shares, or where did you start there? Yeah, I started with CFDs, which is a contract with difference. So it's like a smaller uh, contract for futures and the stock market. Is that like an option? That like option no, trading? no, options is a different again. Like it's a different vehicle. It's still about you know you want to make a profit from it, but um, CFD just allows you to get into a commodity like a futures contract. Uh, at a smaller position. So something like if you want to trade oil or corn, soybeans, all these sort of things that are on yeah, these yeah, futures yeah, markets, yeah, yeah. you need to have a, a, an account that has 
10 grand, 20 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand already in it in order to take one trade, like one contract. So the CFD allows you to get into these positions. It basically just mimics the price of those larger investments and then you can basically trade them without having to have that account of 100 yes, grand to so begin you, with. So you've got so basically what you're saying is it's a leveraged account. If you put like $100 yeah. into it, you can get thousands of dollars leveraged on the back end. Like, yeah, yeah, you can do that with the the futures as well, but the margin requirements you know, in case something goes against you are a lot larger whereas yeah. in the CFDs is quite small. So you can test the waters out and see how you go. See how you go. So yeah. w- Obviously, you started in CFDs, yeah? Yeah. So when you start, what what obviously attracted you to get started in like CFDs in the initial period? Like, was there someone that said, hey, you should start in CFDs? Yeah. yeah I, the first thing was Aussie stocks, because that's the easiest thing. But yeah. I didn't last in that very long. That's why I always say commodities, because that was, well, CFDs, is because that's where I did most of my trading before I gave the full contracts a go. And uh, someone, well, they did say that was in a lot of the, the textbooks that I was reading, and they said the easiest thing to trade are those commodities because the patterns are a little bit more cyclical. And so you can recognize the patterns in the commodities because, you know, commodities have seasons. They, yeah. you know, s- well, so obviously when, grains out, of, when, when yes. grains out of season, like you, you're not going to, not going to be like it's not going to be as volatile as when they, they want loads of grain do you know what i mean so they yes yes is that's, that what you're saying it's a bit exactly it's a bit easier to see in those things so that's why i started in those fields and learned from that and you know sort of left the stocks for a little bit is it is it like is you know, obviously we're talking about patterns and i know there's a lot of patterns within trading like mm. um fibonacci and all that is that, is that, is that yeah yeah, yeah. fibonacci is a sequence of numbers and you know those come up all the time looking at support and resistance yeah yeah so yeah. so with those with those patterns that obviously come within the trading do, do those mimic from market to market across platforms so even if yes. you're trading yeah they do yeah that's that that was what attracted me to technical analysis is that yeah, i can learn these skills and they trans apply yeah. to anything Whereas fundamental, you sh- you do learn skills. You have to learn how to research companies or commodities, whatever. Yeah. But then you have to research every single one, whichever one you want to get into. I love it because you just broke. You've just broke. Uh, that is the one question I wanted to answer today. Is like, if you learn this pattern, can this pattern be transferred into this market, this market, and this market? Yeah. And just by having the power to learn a pattern and just transfer it, yeah, it might not work every single time, but it, if it works seventy percent of the time, you're sweet, aren't you? So it, yeah. What so obviously you've got into trading CFDs and then obviously like how did you get into doing it as a full time thing like generating enough revenue from from learning it to obviously getting into it be able to break into it full time? Yeah, <laughs> that's that's a difficult stage because uh, it's you have you can get your own business and you can you know set yourself up. So I did personal training. I'm going back just a little bit. Yeah, perfect. It's like. Sure, you can you can work your, your days out. Like if I get this many clients, uh, I'm going to make this much money a week and then you sort of target that. Whereas in trading, you just, you can't. Like there's yeah. no way you can say, I'm going to make $1,000 a week in it to begin and that's going to get me enough to get out of my job and go. Yeah, It's kind of like building up bases and as you become more confident in your success, then you sort of have to take the plunge. So in terms of my journey, I didn't jump from uh, like my full-time day job to trading. I had a few things in between and I had a few uh, passive income vehicles to allow me to take the pressure off because you do not want to be pressured when you're trading. Like that'll just lead to a lot of losses because you're, you're stressed. You're stressed. You have to make the money to pay the rent. Like it just doesn't work. I love that. And, I, and, and, and the value that I want, want to bring out to the audience about that is how did you go about building the passive income vehicles in the first place to allow you the time scale to be able to you know, not so you don't not rushing into this trading. So you got the learning curve, so you can actually make a success of it. Because, like you say, if people are pressured and don't have the learning curve with with what yeah. they're doing, that they, they they will fail because they they're they're trying to get all this money real quick. Yeah. And obviously, like we we both know that in this game to be successful, it's a long term play, not a short term play. So what's what was the what was the route to get the passive income sources? How long do we have? We, mate, we, we we have long enough for you to drop that. <laughs> and I, I would say that mine's probably been a lot longer than most people. You know, you have yeah. all these 20-year-olds just going from the teenagers to mid-20s and it's like, it's over. And it's like, you know, I'm, I'm mid-30s and I still feel like I'm building on that journey uh, because 
uh, I'll take one step at the big, you know, the end, and then I'll jump back to the the beginning. It's uh, it got to a point where I was making bigger chunks in longer periods of time, and this was through property development and investing. Yeah, and so that wasn't necessarily a passive income vehicle. Yeah, for sure. So my journey is still in this whole passive income space, but the the bigger chunks is where I do all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I do make big losses as well. Yeah. And that comes down to the psychology of it. But talking about that, it's like, well, look, I'm making big enough chunks. I can kind of do what I need to do. I don't need to spend my time doing something else. I need to focus. Try this out. Yeah, exactly. I've got to go double double down on this. Otherwise, I'll never know. Yeah. No, yeah. I, li- I like it. I like, the, I, I, I like the fact that we've been real and, and told people that you did have an active source of income that you're actively participating in to obviously generate you to be able to leapfrog from that to obviously generating passive income and obviously being actively trading. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I just want to get it. Obviously, pe- a lot of people struggle with like, uh, look, I'll give you an example, right? Mm. I, I started years ago doing a bit of foreign exchange foreign exchange trading right as you all do all the courses are advertised by these a lot of these entrepreneurs have never traded and i realize now that they're just selling for the broker um or their own courses which they make more money from yeah yeah exactly right so so i got pulled into all this so i bought a course right years ago we're talking years ago and i sold this dream and obviously i had the wrong motivator the motivator at the time was just get money right Mm -hmm. because i was broke but the when i when i started doing this course and when I started train, training, uh, trading on this FX, not on a demo account, which I completely ignored, which is stupid, I started trading on on, on FX, right? And and I would I'd, I'd get smacked for for, for a fortune. It just like it was just like compounding over the days and compounding. Anyway, I lost out, lost a few thousand dollars, and then and then obviously gave it up. But one thing I learned is like you need a, you need the right routine as a trader mm. to be, to be able to get your mindset in the pattern of of winning and losing and being nonplussed about both events. And I just want to get, I just want to get your opinion on like what mindset you have to have going in to win more often than not. Good question. I think it's just that I, I, I know I can do it every day. It, it sounds cliche and cheesy. I'll, I'll dig more into it because obviously the, the listeners will want to know more than what, Oh, I know I can do it. Yeah. But I guess I look at it now, probably because I'm a bit older and you know, I'm not that old, 34, but the patience aspect helps. And having made so many videos now on YouTube about ASX stocks, and I knew it before, but I didn't know it in so much depth. I'm versing everyone else in the market, but at the same time, I'm versing myself. So that's why I enjoy this journey of being an investor or working towards being a better investor because it brings things out. So your the question was, around like how do i know yeah getting getting that getting that um, routine and mindset so mm. that when you obviously like tr- and we want people to know this don't we that you can you can win and you can lose big in trading or you can win and lose small but there's, there's a win and loss element to, to trading and that's the game you're playing right yeah and obviously the, the more educated on the technicals you are the more chance you've got of actually winning more often than you lose i get that but well like, I'd, add, I'd add in as well you know your, your personal psychology and you're talking yeah. about the, the strategy the um your, your plan and your structure throughout the day and yeah, the daily the winning, routine, the daily routine and the winning mindset. So the, the mindset now comes from, I understand this information and everyone has the same information, but they do not implement it. They just, yeah. they, I, they don't do it. And I now have confirmation that they don't do it. They don't want to believe it. They don't trust it, whatever the hell it is uh, from my YouTube video. So I put the videos out telling exactly what I do. Yeah, I mention it in comments, whatever. Then I get responses from people saying, uh, "This didn't work. That didn't work. Um, you know, it's your fault." Or no, that's that's never going to work. So fine, you know, that's wow. your choice. Uh, find what works for you. It doesn't bother me because I don't need you to. I don't need your approval. It's fine. It works for me. Yeah, and and it would work for them if they properly invested the time into what what a lot of those people will have is that they'll ha- they'll be looking at a lot of people's trading videos. Yeah, yeah, they got too many opinions going on, too many mentors. Yeah, yeah, and they think that there is one particular way that is going to work and there is one way that will work for you and then that one way will change because you develop, you learn more, all that sort of thing. So that's what you're talking about when it comes to the winning mindset is that yeah, I, yeah. I know how I trade now. I want to give more like depth I, to I, it, I, think but what, I think what you're trying to articulate is yeah. the fact that you need to know yourself 
first before yeah. you can become a good trader because if you don't know yourself by the sounds of it from what you've said you can you can there's there's too many like flippant decisions that you can make throughout a day which could cost you a lot of money i think that's what you're trying to say yeah yeah the, you have to know yourself so you know thanks for no no, no. I'm, it's, I'm, it's good. I'm, I'm just thinking it oh, I, yeah. I, i'm not i'm not the trader here like no, it's exactly what wrong. it comes down to though like it's yeah. I know myself now. I know that it's obviously I'm going to learn. Like we can we can put that aside that this isn't the end game. I'm going to continue learning. Yeah. But in the beginning, it's you have to know yourself. You have to trust what you're doing. And at times in the beginning, I didn't trust what I was doing, even though I was doing all right. And as it continues on, you start to compare and you go, well, okay, why didn't someone else get the profit? Like I got the profit using the same information. It's because all those things that you've gone through, maybe they didn't believe it, they didn't trust it, and so you you basically build that winning mindset along the course. And it might not just come from trading. It comes from other things in your life because, you know, you're into fitness. And so, you know, in a winning space, like how you get your mind frame into it. It's so, just reps. Just yeah, reps. reps, reps, reps. So you don't need to be in the investment space. You can pull that knowledge and that belief, that feeling from other areas in your life that you've had, you have had success at and pull that across here. So when troubled times come, you can, you can use that. I'm going to ask you a question about psychology because I know so much psychology is invested in this, but why do you think so many people out there hate talking about money and feel so much, so much like anguish about talking about it? Oh, um, look, I guess it's different things in our past as well. And like, I, I don't mind talking about money, but I, there are things that I believe that a lot of people don't believe and we can go down that path in terms of like uh, the way government uses our money, taxation, people are going to start throwing their arms up in the air, you know, tax is good for society and I don't I don't think we should be taxed the way we are. So that kind of comes into money as well because I don't believe the way things are used and the way they're done is the, is, is is the, the benefit right society yeah, yeah. at the moment, yeah. So you know, you start to bring that up and then it starts to offend people and, you know, it just gets into a bit of a fight. But unless we were in person, you need that whole element to be able to talk with someone, uh, you know, to see their facial expressions and what they're feeling. Because online, which is where we talk a lot about money now, it's just, it's too disjointed. Yeah. People can really get their emotion up too high. So it makes it even that much more difficult to talk about money. And it's so easy for like people to... um watch a YouTube video where they get all this confidence about money compared to what they did know and then go into a, a trading account like IG, just open an account mm. in like five minutes and go out and think that they're the world's best trader from and just throw money at it, you know what I mean, and get smacked and then and then that damages their confidence because they haven't put the, they haven't put the reps in mm. like what you said in the original period um, and, and, you know, got it down pat before they've gone in. Yeah, yeah, it definitely took years. I started in 2010 and I I'd never, f- I didn't even feel like I was a good trader until recently. Really? You, you, yeah, you, I took some time years. off in terms of like not day trading, but I was end of day. Yeah. So I took some years off and I was more into the property space. But even at the time where I was making a profit, I wasn't making a loss. I still didn't feel like I deserved it. And that came down into different psychologies. And not everyone has that around money, but that was my journey I had to go through to break through in order to feel like, all right, you know, I I do have a control over this and, you know, I know what I'm doing. Could you just break down for me the different the different types of trading that there are in terms of like you mentioned day trading and then you mm-hmm. mentioned end of day trading. Okay, so day trading you're in front of the markets throughout the day yep. and you're essentially looking at you know minute charts, hourly charts, this sort of thing to scalp the market. Is yeah, that what you're talking about? pretty much, pretty much. Whereas mine was just looking at daily bars, and so you only get one bar per day. Right. Okay. So I would have to look at the market once a day. Yeah. But then if things change throughout the day, I would have alerts to look at it again. So yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. twice, maybe three times. Uh, and then I've just extended that time frame out a lot longer to be on a weekly or a monthly basis. So I'll still check the numbers daily because I enjoy it. Yeah. But in terms of making uh, decisions on exiting positions, it won't be for weeks, more likely months. Really? So, you, so you're sitting in a position for, for weeks and months at a time rather than trying to take out, take it out every end of the day. Correct. Like a lot. Of, Correct. But most traders, are, in, in my... Um, understanding they're trying that they're, they're sold the thing of being in and out of the market in a day yeah and i think is is that is that the reason why you think most people get smacked because because the psychology is you're using your psychology is used on so many different days rather than over a longer term i think so yeah and if you're doing it intraday or end of day so 
you know, day trading. Yeah. The idea is that you can make an income daily. So it's, it's, it's so much easier in a mindset to be broken down for the average nine to fiver in order to sell them that course. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, if you can just make $200 a day, you can get out of your job, buy my course. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, well, that's easy. Let's go do that. But it's, it, it it's takes not that so easy. Much. It's not that easy <laughs> and it takes so much of your brain energy. It just drains the hell out of you. And if you don't get those wins, don't get those, you know, that profit in the bank quickly, you burn out and you're done. That's but, that's yeah. why that's why I, I that's why I developed a, a hate for it in the initial mm. period because I thought this is just this is just a job. Like oh I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because day trading is a job. It's and it's one of the worst jobs I think. Yeah, some people love it. That's fine, but for most people, you're coming from a regular nine to five job where a boss tells you to do something, you follow the orders, you go on a lunch break. You, you know, it doesn't matter if you don't get something exactly right because it'll get fixed up. No, it's it's completely different. It's it's a real chore. Yeah, honestly, that I, that, that's exactly what I felt like the mm. whole time I was doing it. I was just so unhappy because I was like, not only one day I'd I'd win like a few hundred dollars above what I'd put in and then the next day I'll get smacked for the same amount but like e- even the winning day and the and the losing day both felt like I'm I'm at, I'm at the desk for eight hours which defeats the fucking object of of of, of what I was trying to achieve yeah like I was, yes I was trying to achieve like money but I wasn't trying to work I wasn't trying to repeat having a job do you know what I mean it's just terrible <laughs> most people just jump from one to the other and create themselves a job so I noticed that and I'm like longer term I'm in the position I can do that uh, that's where my patience comes in I can go and spend my time doing other things like YouTube channel, trying to surf, exercise, whatever. Yeah. And just know that even if the market goes against me 20%, 30%, I'm, I've, my position is set for the long term and I, I'm looking to make much bigger multiples. Just talk to me about this YouTube channel because obviously I, I've, I've looked at it and extensively looked at quite a few of the videos. They're good videos and you put a lot of good information out there and I, I encourage people and I'll put a link to it in the podcast notes cool. so people can go view it. But is that like a legacy play for you in terms of like um, teaching others, passing on knowledge? Is is that is that what yeah. is that what? Because obviously, when I noticed when I was doing this little bit of trading and stuff, and it's, it's soulless, isn't it? On your own, like without without passing on any knowledge, it's just like a bit soulless. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> I enjoy it from the point that I get to learn, and the YouTube channel forces me to learn a bit more. Because yeah. I put stuff out and then if I'm researching it or, or you know doing a video on it, I'm like, oh, I need to learn a little bit more about that before I talk about it. I'll go and do that. Then I get the questions from people and like, what about this, this, this? And I'm like, oh, cool. I can, I can go and learn that, put it into a video and then get some feedback. So, And I love that point. And I just want to point out, break down that for the audience because what you've just said, it, it really resonates with me because you've just said, Jason just said, I learn. I go and learn something. Learn something. Then I implement it. Mm-hmm. Then I get feedback. Then I go learn something. Then I implement it. He doesn't say in this podcast. He didn't say I'm going to learn a course where it's like sixteen modules. He said I'm going to learn a piece of information. I'm going to implement it. And I'm going to get feedback on it. And that is something I want you to want to resonate in your head right now, because everyone's trying to implement. 32 different steps in the world and then they could just literally watch a 10 minute youtube video implement a little bit of strategy see see get some feedback on it and then see if it works and then go from there do you know what i mean like and everyone's trying to overcomplicate it uh, and like i said before I, I get that on the comments where i just make it as simple as i can in the video support and resistance this yeah. is it and then people are like no what about this stochastic and this macd and these ema and i'm like like if it works for you, use it. But in terms of the the principle we're trying to learn here is just simplify things. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you're a fighter. You probably heard the Bruce Lee quotes as well. Yeah, 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 for and sure. Like, yeah, yeah, one where it's like you know, take what you need and discard the rest, and then make what you have your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I yeah, love yeah. That. So I, I didn't say it right, but that's essentially the the idea that he's talking about. And yeah. I'm like, that's just what I want to do with this, and I've got the time to do it in the day, and I don't need to be like the top of the game because I've got the patience and that's my, I believe that's my edge when I compare to pretty much everyone else I see on YouTube trying to make quick trades. Yeah. Not only that though, but they, they, they look at YouTube for, for, for the wrong reasons too, because they're trying to create videos on, on something like quick trades, but then they're also trying to create the videos for the YouTube revenue as well. Like, yeah, don't get me wrong. Like I enjoy that as well because that's another side game. It's Passive. Like, yeah, yeah. I can, how can I improve this video to, to do well in the YouTube algorithm. Otherwise, it's like, well, what's the, what's what's the, point? the point? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so the same thing with the course. Like I will be building courses, but I want to build it to see what my knowledge is like and how 
I how your knowledge about. grows. Exactly, yeah. and how I can create this product. Uh, and then if people buy it, great, I want them to get value from it. Otherwise, I didn't do something right. Yeah, for sure. No, and yeah. I like that. And just obviously you've got 30,000 subs on YouTube, right? Yeah. How long does it even take to get a YouTube channel off from like zero to like where you are right now? Uh, for mine, it took ages because I just did not pay attention to little nuances that are going on in the YouTube algorithm or SEO or making content that is searchable. So there's so many little things that I've just picked up in the last six months. Um, so I'm probably not the best example from that. Everything I've done, I've just screwed up initially for a long time and been very stubborn. And then eventually something clicks and I'm like, oh crap, you know, I could have figured this out ages ago, but I was too stubborn. So that's sort of the story of my life. You ask my, my parents, you ask my siblings, you ask everyone, I'm stubborn. Yeah, but but do you know what, right? I think that's a growth thing. Yeah. Because like to get to to get to thirty four years old and, and then obviously like to, to, to realise that yeah, I'm a bit stubborn, maybe I need to work on that is like it's good because most people are, st- are still stubborn at fifty. True. Stubborn at sixty. True. So there's a lot of there's a lot of growth in that to be able to identify and to be, and to have the success that you've had and still been stubborn. Imagine when you're not stubborn. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, mean? I don't want to leave that too long to, to realize yeah. that as well. Yeah, well, that stops today. All right, Jason. Uh, yeah, yeah, we go. Yeah, we go. <laughs> but yeah. like, mate, I, now I want to go on to something that really is your jam. That really is your... I, I want to... Because I want to learn about this. Bitcoin. I don't understand it. I, well, I do understand a little bit, but I want you to break down... Because I know you trade Bitcoin, sell Bitcoin. I know, I like know I said, all my trades are long term. So yeah. I just take a, a big position with where I think the risk is very low. Yeah. And then I see the reward as being very high. So it's just called an asymmetric trade or asymmetric yeah. risk. And basically sit in it and wait. You know, I've got my targets in mind. I look at market sentiment. Obviously I'll get back to your point of understanding what Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies yeah, yeah, yeah. are. So, 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 but this I is essentially this. my my trading plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is I just look at it in terms of fundamental perspective as well. Like is it needed? Is it being used? Is it growing? All those sorts of things. Is it on an uptrend? Is it yep. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, all right, that's the case. What's the downside? All right, I don't. I look at different things. Like, is this? Can it crash? Are people going to stop using it? What's the worst that can happen? Why would it be uh, not used? Like, what are those things? And and are the upsides stronger than the downsides? Which is essentially all your fundamental stuff that you'd yeah. probably do for a company or you know stock that you're looking at. And um, I want to make sure that that upside is huge and the mm. downside is small. Right. Okay. And you think? And you? So you're? Are you? What like obviously you you trade crypto now, don't you? That, that's your jam, right? Essentially, you enjoy, but you enjoy that more than the stocks, right? It would definitely, yeah, I can say that. So, so tell me about crypto then, and what you see as the future of crypto, because obviously you've got a bit more knowledge about this than I have. I look again. I just break things down simply. Yeah, I love that. It's simply, and I see the future. You can say it's see it as bright, but why? And I would say that I think it's a necessary play in the current financial environment. I, I wouldn't say I'm a doomsdayer or I think the world's going to come to an end or any of this sort of crap that you hear online about, you know, you have to switch over systems. You know, we have the, the legacy system of the fiat currency and it's only going to be, um, you know, Bitcoin down the track and it's only going to be cryptocurrencies. Uh, but I definitely see that there is a place for it in the overall market as well. Yeah. Yeah, um, primarily because we are going very much digital, which is no surprise they, to anyone. They, they, you, you know, I mean, I don't want to be a, I'm not going to be a conspiracy theorist on the podcast, but let's be <laughs> Go honest. Go for it. They're, Bring they're, it on. They're, they're, they're bank, they're, they're, they've, they've banned the use of cash, which is kind of ironic, um, <laughs> an ironic play, right? Yeah. Um, well, they, you can, in, in Australia, you they can ban it. Do you really know that, that one? Like, no, I don't know. They, don't, they, don't, they haven't banned it, but if in a shop – they have a sign at the front saying we don't accept cash and this is our only form of payment yep. and they're allowed to not accept cash, wow. which with cash was, it was a legal tender or is a legal tender and you have to accept it up until COVID. We should, we, we should be fighting to keep cash as a societal use because it's, it's basically like you can, 
you know, sometimes you just want to pay your mate fifty dollars to give you a massage or whatever, like your girl mate or something. Like, <laughs> probably a bad example. I don't know why you use that example? Uh, uh, it's it's a crap example, but I'm going to go with it, right? Because I'm I'm in it now. But you're like, in it now. You do. Like you, you might drop fifty dollars on your on your girl mate who may be Brazilian to give you a massage, right? I see where we're going. And, yeah. And and yeah, you don't, you don't want to just put that all through the books all the time. You know what I mean? Sometimes she, she might not want to pay. <laughs> she might not want to pay twenty percent. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Exactly. Or even if we're getting into the tax space, it's just. Yeah. It's for our own freedom of it's a currency and now we're being forced to use it in a way because of government. It's like, are we voting on this? Uh, do we understand the implications of it? I'd say most people don't. Most people don't even understand what money is, like how it got here, all that sort of thing. Uh, it's it's kind of nice now that it's becoming a lot more um, known as to how money got to where it is and yeah. fractional reserve and, and all this sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, obviously we told nothing about that. I just, I just, it just made me laugh one day when I, when I read, um, it, what, well, well, what, I actually met Robert Kiyosaki in Brisbane a couple of years back, but I'd read his book and all this kind of stuff. And his, his whole thing was like, why would you save like money? Like, why would you save cash when they can just literally print a load more? Like, like, like why would you thinking. save something to print? And, and it's been happening in Japan for like years and years and years. Like, they just keep, they just keep, printing and printing and printing and printing more of it but the japanese people just keep saving it all like just working for it keep saving it but it's, it's being like devalued every time that they do it pretty much it's that that's the, been the system since i think they took it off the the gold standard you know like i'm i'm sort of just talking from a lot of things that i've read and heard and there's obviously yeah. a much deeper story to the whole thing and understanding to it but you know, after the the gold, uh, the US dollar was taken off the gold, being gold backed in 1971, you know, it just allows more printing. And I was very much against this, and I thought, you know, it's a bad thing for society for a long time. And I, I would say it's not until recently that I actually appreciate the benefits it has had for society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously, there's drawbacks. There's you know, it's always going to be drawbacks. Always drawbacks. Man. The benefits to it is that we're able to uh, loan out more money, and we could explode those markets and uh, basically turn that piece of paper, the US piece of paper, into something of value that yeah. people want more of. And you can create a ton of them at the drop of a hat. Uh, so people want more of that, which just allows for more lending and more credit to be created, and then we can have more, uh, you know, inventions and things get built. So, like, I think if we were still just trading off gold, you 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 don't have that same space unless there was a credit market yeah, to yeah, sure. allow that sort of creation. Hundred percent. I think I think you do need cash. It's more convenient. You do need it. I do think it should be more gold backed. I do think the currency should be gold backed personally, like because I think that gives it a tangible asset that you can go to the bank and say, look, hey, I want I want I want my weight in gold for for the value of this money. It kind of keeps keeps the currency worth something. But if you do um back it with gold then you can't just go print as much as you like like you say which which then cuts down the the you know the world because you can't go pay people you can't go build stuff you can't go do all this stuff yeah it sort of stunts growth in that aspect and it's like you know what i mean i think we're at that time in human evolution that that was worthwhile yeah uh there's obviously going to be recourse to it and you know we'll experience those with the next crash and the next crash i don't know how many we can you know, we can sustain until it's over, yeah. but it's definitely needed in a period of history before we go through another period of history of consolidation again. So we have an expansion and growth. It's just looking at cycles, looking at patterns. You have cycles and patterns on small scales and huge scales, and there's daily cycles, monthly, weekly, yearly, 10 years, 50 years, 60s, 100 years, 13,000 year cycles. Yeah. And so uh, stuff that I've seen as well, we're in, I think it's a hundred, 120 year cycle. Is it Ray Dalio that he's, the, the, uh, he, no, he I don't, writes about this? He does write about it, yeah, but um, I've looked at um, the different traders like WD Gann and then uh, guys who have extended on that work and then they sort of get into the astrology space and all this sort of thing with planetary alignments and all this sort of crap. But I, it's something to go down another rabbit hole. But in terms of this expansion and contraction, um, maybe Ray Dalio has also touched on that where we do go through 100 or so years of an expansion and then we have 100 or so years of contraction. Yeah. Where that point is, I think he's got wrong a couple of times, but I mean, it's a, it's might I be th- a bit difficult one to, yeah. to, to grasp. I, th- I, think it's, I think it's a hard one to quantify because he, I don't think he was wrong. I think, I think the reason why he was out was because he didn't realise how much money they were willing to print to get out of that 
thing when he said it was going to turn. That's what mm. he says. He's like, I didn't realize how far the, the, the bank would push it and how much money they'd be willing to print to dig themselves out of that little blip. And because of that, that's put us a few years back because I didn't realize how deep that they would go with it. And that, that's, that's, that's basically what he said. He yeah. said it just kicks the can down the road. It, it does. It always kicks the, can, kicks the can down the road. And, you know, he's had another call, which he talks about in 1980, 1982, where I think he said the government was going to collapse at yeah. that point and he bet against them really big and that's where he lost and I don't know if he went bankrupt but he definitely had to borrow money off of, of someone to rebuild his investment portfolio back then so that's you know that's his little 40 year cycle he got that wrong I mean we all get stuff wrong but yeah I think that's part of the cycle that he hasn't looked at and he's a billion dollar hedge fund guy I'm just some dude in a little studio here yeah when hey, I go, go easy on the little studio, man. The little studio. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's a very large, epic studio. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good, you need a little studio to get the sound right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's oh, right. Look at him digging it out now. Yeah. Digging it out. Give me, give me a little kiddie dig. I was, I was protecting my kidneys, and he's, he's, he's like, he's like pulled it out of the bag. Yeah, anyway. I get smacked in the face. You're the boxer, aren't you? Yeah, mate, 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 mate. We're, we're, we're all, we're all boxing here. We're just, we're just uh, boxing on mics right now. But mate, so most people, obviously, look, they, they. Most people haven't got investments. Actually, when I was reading the statistics, I think it's like most people haven't even got a couple of thousand dollars saved. And you're the personal finance kind of guy. So, like, give can you just give me a brief overview of what you think that most people should put in place in terms of how to get from, like, working, working a job where they're working, like, 40 hours a week and earning X amount of money per week so that they have, a, so they have the savings. And then once they've got the savings, they can go and invest it and kind of give them a bit of a route to get to where sure, get to sure, that sure. point. Yeah, so from the investment point of view, I get that question a lot. It's like, well, what level should I start at investing? Yeah. And I'm like, well, how much do you have? And what are you comfortable with losing and all this sort of stuff? So these there are questions that you have to put in play before it's just like, how much do I want? So if I give you one example um, from a, a you know student I've been talking with, uh, they were looking at what they were comfortable with. I s- suggested possibly six to 12 months. Yeah, yeah. And so that's a different figure for everyone, obviously. Um, these people, they were expecting a baby and all this sort of stuff. So they wanted to have 50 grand saved as a backup then have another 30 grand, I think it was, on top of that before they start investing. Yeah. That's going to be completely different for everyone. I think their income was over six figures, so it's a bit easier to do that. Yeah, for sure. I, I don't see any problem with starting with 1000 bucks. Yeah. You just don't want to be in a space where you're going to lose most of that to fees. And right. trading in stocks, using the basics like a Comsec app or whatever, Yeah. then you're going to lose a, a ton in fees. Really? Yeah, yeah. So if you're just using Comsec... You can use Com- uh, Comsec Pocket or one of these other ones, which are a lot lower fees. But if you just use the basics like Westpac or NAB or any of the big banks and they have their own trading app, it's like 10 to $20 per trade. So if you're going to buy two different stocks with a 1000 bucks, there goes about 10 to $20 per 500 So that's a lot of fees right. just from that one. And that and that and that he and that's how, see I don't I I I've, I've obviously seen that fee because I've I got I've got the Comsec traded account right so I've yeah. I've got a little sum in there that I've been investing for for a little while and that but obviously like I've noticed the five and ten dollar fees uh, mm. the, the ten the ten or nineteen dollar fees depending exactly. on how much you're trading but I didn't think compared to the amount of money that you're putting in the market that was a big fee but you're but you're saying it is in comparison to different things out there yeah yeah especially if you you're like if you're only doing two stocks at 500 a piece because some of those are minimum you can only put 500 yeah, it, in it's minimum 500 on all platforms i think on, yeah. on, on the comsec anyway and that's yeah. probably a 10 dollar fee so you're looking at two percent on that so you need the market to rise two percent to get yeah. that money back then you need the market to rise another two percent to sell it out so you need four percent on that yeah i didn't and, i didn't think of it like that yeah but I, I i do buy things i if i buy something i buy it for like five ten years because i don't see i don't see sure i don't see the point in 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 buying things for, to try and flip it out in the center. obviously i had i i did i did very well out of zip pay and after pay and oh and, good and you got out of them yeah i got out of them lucky yeah basically basically i i i i bought in zip pay at, uh i think i bought in at like through uh two two dollars seventy 
Oh, and I sold out at seven dollars, and I bought in uh, after pay at fifteen bucks, eight bucks, and fifteen bucks, and I sold out at seventy five, eighty dollars. But I thought, you know what, I'll take the capital gains on that. Like it's, it's a good little, good little clip. And then I, I and then I reinvested that into a couple of other buy now pay later firms. That I, I invented, I invested in, in, I bought into Split It at sixty cents, and then the next day they 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 did a five year deal with Mastercard, and it went to one fifty. I was like, sweet as a nut. You know what I mean? That's not bad. Yeah, double and a half in a day. Yeah, so that's not bad. So like, I, I just, I just kind of figured out what my niches are, where I can see where things are going, and kind of stick to my niches like with inside stocks. But I don't basically the accounts up, mate, is what I'm saying. The accounts mm. up from what it was. But yeah. I understand what you're saying. That that percent, I did never thought, I never thought of it like that. So you've just taught me a lot there because I never even thought of it like that. You got to make two percent, then two percent on top. That's a, that's a great learning curve. Yeah, and it's it mainly goes with those older blue chip stocks which you know like your CAB or something yeah for it to yeah. go from 60 bucks you need what's four percent on that you know a few bucks to go up yeah yeah and you're like well I'm not going to sell that now you know I'm expecting this thing to go a bit higher it is small at the end of the day but if you're investing you know every time you're sort of losing that every clip yeah yeah for sure for sure yeah no no I love it I, I love how you've how you broke that down because I I just didn't even notice I didn't even I didn't even notice. I just thought, oh, it's ten dollars, but you've just gone out. Oh, it's two percent. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I get it now. Yeah, in terms of percentage, like you're you've, you're looking at the highly speculative stuff, the growth stock. So why not? You know, two percent is nothing when you're looking for a hundred percent or two hundred percent return. You know, yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah, no, yeah. no, it is. It is. Do you, do you go speculative on on stuff, or do you do you focus on more blue chip stuff? Uh, you, crypto it, speculative, yeah. The whole thing's speculative, yeah. but I I believe Bitcoin and Ethereum have a lot longer future than yeah. a lot of the others. There's, there's heaps of great projects. It's just like the safer bets because there are a lot more people in them and there's use case and all this sort of stuff for it. As as much as people think some of them are, are crap and old and slow, like they're just being used. They're being bought by big institutions and that information is on the blockchains as well. So it's out there. You can see it being done. And I've heard of Eth- Ethereum, the one Ethereum, that you, yeah. Ethereum that you've just mentioned. Obviously, I know that's the second largest one, right? Yeah, market cap. Yeah, but but the thing is, I don't see loads of places that are accepting that. Like, Do you mean like like like, 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 like Bitcoin? Yeah, or are there or are there? Am I just missing it? Uh, there is like we're in Gold Coast, Southeast Queensland. I'm not sure if the company is throughout Australia at the moment, but I think it is. It's a place called Travel by Bit. Right. Okay. And they are setting up. Uh, like little payment stations at a lot of different places. So usually if Bitcoin's accepted there, then they'll accept, I think it's like Ethereum, Litecoin, Ripple, and probably Bitcoin Cash or something like that. So, Did yeah. you ever get into mining it? Like, as no, a, no, no. You no, never no, got no, into no, that? Because no, no, no. you know, I have to invest a whole lot of money into the hardware. Yeah. You just want to ride You just want to ride waves. Yeah, yeah ride waves. I, I think it's interesting, but I, I look, it's, it heats up. It has a whole lot of things that go. I got need uh, air conditioning and doesn't really... It doesn't really work here too well. I've got another big, big guest planned um, for the, for, the, for the next few weeks. All right, I'm and, keen. Um, Go on. And he's he's a he basically created his own um, cryptocurrency and um, sold out, and also did a lot. Of, he's done a lot of work in the crypto space. And who is this? It sounds like an exit scam. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I don't know the full. Like, let let him put it down before. But no, right. what he did is some pretty epic shit. He made he made he made a lot of millions out of it, but. He's got. He'll drop. He'll drop the value on that. I'm sure there's. I'm sure there's lots of things that we can learn in it. Maybe not what to can do. Can you drop the name? I can't yeah, because he's not confirmed. Uh, but when he confirms, like I'm going to drop gotcha, it. I'll right. drop it. But I just thought when you said you know about you know you don't buy the hardware and all that stuff, but he set up his own um, crypto and like you say, some of them are scams. I know that, but this this one was. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd, let's just, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like I don't know enough to drop it on here right now. That's but right. Like off it. But yeah, off air we'll do it. But in regards to um, the, the 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 like what obviously obviously look, we can't give investment advice, and we're not trying to give you investment sure. advice in a podcast. But like, which which are the horses? <laughs> <laughs> which horses in a in a, in a in a do you think that are only going to go north for the next X amount of time? Like, can we, can you drop that? Sure. I mean, like we said, it's, it's an opinion. It's, it's an opinion. opinion. Yeah, exactly. it's an opinion. I'm just saying, it's like, education. I'm just saying, look, if I'm if I'm a, if I'm at a raceway and I want to bet on a horse in in the crypto market, which horses do I back right now? Is what I'm saying. <laughs> Usually, I keep it simple and safe. As boring as that is, no, that's not boring. That's Bitcoin, that's Ethereum, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. That's just, it. Like 
they have the most use case at the moment. There's plenty of others out there, like I said, that will do it. But if I'm looking at it and, you know, people usually ask that don't have the time to do any more, uh, you know, research and then they have their own day job and they've got all this other stuff going on. For me, I think that's the safest bets because then more likely these people aren't going to look at it again. Yeah, so like, oh, yeah. that's it. Cool. Boom. It's so, like I'm not going to talk about one that you have to be on to uh, watching it on a weekly basis or a daily basis as, yeah. it, as it moon shoots and then you got to wait for it. And like that stuff isn't for most people, although they f- believe that that's what they want. Yeah. Yeah. And do, how do you, how do you even buy a Bitcoin? Uh, simple, like a, like an exchange you would. So, you know, you'd buy a stock. Yeah. You set up a brokerage account, like your ComSec account, you know, fund it. Yeah. And then basically look for the the stock that you want and then you purchase it. Are purchase you purch- it. you're you're talking about purchasing purchasing it as a stock not as a physical not as a, not oh, as it's like not, Well, we know it's not physical. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I I know, but not as like because you know you can have obviously the coins that sit in your digital wallet. So you're not saying purchase it like purchase the actual coin itself. You're saying yeah, purchase yeah, yeah. the yeah. stock. Yeah, I was just using a, that as an example of how yeah. you would do it. Like it's the same process that you would with a stock that you do with a a crypto. So you have a um a, cryptocurrency exchange and you have like a fiat on ramp so it's basically the exchanges that you can connect with your bank account yeah connect your bank account to it transfer your money from the bank into the cryptocurrency exchange and then on the exchange it will have multiple different coins that you can buy yeah and then you basically just place an order you know buy or sell order and then that goes into your wallet on that exchange and then if you want to transfer it into a you know offline wallet a hardware wallet a whatever wallet a mobile app then you just get your address from those. So your Bitcoin address, copy and paste it, put it on the exchange and send it. It's, it's, it's like it's, sending money to a different yeah, bank account. Yeah, no, I, I like it. I like it, but it's obviously a lot more secure and a lot, and it's on a ledger, isn't it, with this blockchain? But look, what do you, I, I, like someone said to me that was in, uh, that's a good investor as well, and obviously like you all have different opinions, but I want to get your opinion on this. Mm. Someone said, said to me, look, Frankie, I, I do believe Bitcoin and Ethereum would 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 be like the winners in this race in terms of cryptocurrencies. Mm-hmm. But he's like he's in, he's heavily invested in that blockchain technology itself and companies that use the blockchain technology to do all kinds of stuff. Like uh, I think he, he invested in a company that did um, where you could sell your house through like blockchain, like on a ledger. Like I, I, I don't fully understand it, but I just wondered: is, is there anything? Is is that a space that you're looking into the blockchain space? Is this the Jefferson House? Huh? Is this the Jefferson House? The Jefferson House? What's the Jefferson House? Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, uh, nah. Oh, that was uh, actually I talked to a friend at the gym, right? And yeah. he that was his house that he was trying to sell. He's trying for, to sell it for, sell for, it for Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah, it was all on. It was on the news. It was back. I think it was late 2017 or maybe early 2018 when it was all the hype. Maybe it was through that period actually, probably later. But anyway, I forget now. Um, uh, yeah, he was. He was trying. He was trying to sell it for, for Bitcoin. Yeah, but yeah. I think it was three hundred and forty-seven Bitcoin or three hundred sixty-seven Bitcoin or something like that. It's just in northern New South Wales. No. Yeah. So what he was, what he was, what he was, just, what he was saying to me was like, you. It basically meant you didn't have to have um, a bank or an, an agent or something because you could just transfer it through right. ledger. Is what I'm saying. Using the using, using the smart contract as the, the smart contract. So I just yeah. wondered if you'd in, obviously as an investor yourself, you must be looking at that technology and, and seeing things within like smart contracts and the way that that's going. Sure. So the way I look at that is. Who creates smart contracts? And Ethereum does the smart contracts. Yes, there are plenty of other cryptos that do smart contracts. Yep. Ethereum at this stage is the biggest and most developers on there to improve it. And yep. although it has a lot of drawbacks and it's slow and high fees and all this sort of stuff, yep. there, the other companies who are trying to fix that are doing it for Ethereum. They're not Now it's not so much. There are them out there that aren't creating like another company to beat Ethereum, yes, they are out there, yeah. but there's a lot more people working on Ethereum to create uh, what do they call it? like level two solutions and all this sort of stuff to make it better to use these smart contracts in order to do uh, things like like what I'm saying exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly like selling houses and using it that way. No, I, I, yeah. I love it because that's that's where I could see the practical application of the actual technology that backs the actual currency itself. Yes, because I don't. I, I I agree with you that if I was gonna if I was gonna back a race, I'd back Ethereum and um and uh, Bitcoin. However, the, I think that I think the underlying technology is what's gonna what's gonna get mass adopted 
Um, and, yeah, I mean, and, how can you invest in that technology? Yeah, and how can how can yeah. I how can I catch the investment wave of the on the back of the technology rather than actually capitalize on the currencies themselves? Yeah. So I just see it like Ethereum is using the smart contracts and there's a lot of companies that are building on top of Ethereum that are using the smart contract to do other things practical in the everyday world. And so they are like, I've heard it been put like this before, like a, I think they're like the vending machine. Yeah. And so they are the vending machine and to be able to sell your product, you you need the vending machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, in, yeah. in this case, obviously. Yeah. And so where is the money accumulated? It's accumulated in the vending machine, not the one-off products. Yeah, because it clips the ticket every time. Exactly. The ticket. And you exactly. want, and you you want, want those because they can yeah. scale and make yeah. more money than the little crap that's like, oh, you know, I'm inventing a cryptocurrency that, I don't know, produces plastic bottles and you need the coin in order to produce the next bottle or recycle it or, I don't know, making up stuff that doesn't even make sense. But there are a lot of these tokens that don't really make sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah and they don't have the scalable. Pump and dumps, they call them. Yeah, pump and dump. Yeah. And they just don't have the scalable model like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, as, 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 as a couple of couple of um, people in, in this area of the world that have done pump and dumps, <laughs> do yeah. you know what I mean? Like, that we probably both know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I fully don't... Like your mate that you were getting on? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> he, he's been, he was involved at a lot higher level than that. But, yeah, no, I, I know... Because I, I knew the one... As soon as I said it, I thought, I know the ones that you think I'm talking about, but I'm not. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, I, I know, I know. Because that house has been on the news many times. Like, we, we all know that one. But... That's mate, a different one, I think. A different one. There's another one I wasn't going to mention who is the more pump and dump style. Yeah. But I think we're getting a bit off track. We could no, 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 do no, another no, one. Yeah. No, let's, let's, let's bring it in. I just want to, I just want to say like, uh, the, the one question I want to ask you is that's more so about yourself is like, what, like in the next five years, like what does Jason Pizzino really want to achieve? Like in terms of like investment, where he wants to be, how many people he wants to impact. Like I really want to get that out of you. Where does Jason want to be? Yeah. I, I don't really look at it like how many people I don't want to impact. You know, I want to get a million books to a million people for it. Like none of that. It's just five years, as cl- again, as cliche as it is, because I've tried to set these goals many, many times before. I just, I just want to continue on my journey to growth and more happiness and just surround myself with those good people. Like I know it's, it sounds lame, but every time I try to do something else like, hey, I want to hit this target of X amount per month, I don't know, just, there's no feeling there for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? So, what, so, what, so what goals have you got set out? It doesn't matter the time frame, but what goals have you got set out right now that really light you up? All right, the things I come back to, I on a weekly basis... Sorry to punch you with this, but I just, no, I just no, no. want to I wanna know, I want to get your thought process now. We've had enough about the technicals and all that stuff. I really want to get your thought process and I really want to understand you. Sure. Well, look, on a weekly basis, I meet with my fiancé. We're about to have a baby in a couple of months. Congratulations, um, bro. Thanks very much. And my Uncle Frankie or what? <laughs> Well, it sounds like it sounds a bit creepy, but sure, you can yeah, be man. Frankie. Yeah, well, I am my niece and nephew are in England, man, and I miss, I miss. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> no, no, I know what you mean. You know, the family thing as well. It's but a family thing, man. Exactly. Um, so we meet on a weekly basis, and we do like a bit of a relationship meeting, which we started just several months ago. And relationship meeting. I'm going to jot that down, man. That's that's good. I yeah, love that relationship like, meeting. I, I thought about it after a point where, you know, some things. You know, we just had a bit of disagreement on things. Yeah, yeah. We, I don't think we ever fought. We've been like nearly four years and we don't fight. It's just like, oh, you didn't do this. I was expecting that. So we started this meeting. I know you, we were going to get back to the point of what my, my big goals are, but no, th- no, we started no, no. I this. Like, I like this. I like, yeah. I like these tangents. This is good. I like, I like tangents because, and this, it, because this is, this is what goes on behind the, the, the you know, Jason, the trader over here. That's great. But like, what's the real, like, let's, let's, do you know what I mean? You're just about to break down something that's so real that it's going to hit so many people between the eyes. So crack on. Good, good, good. Yeah. So we had that and I thought, look, if you spend a lot of time at your job or you're creating your own business, you have a plan. But most of us, we get a partner and then you don't really plan anything after that. You're just like, you just expect things to to work out. Yeah. So I thought, why don't we just let's meet and chat about, you know, how's our communication? How is our our health together? What about our um, goals? Mm -hmm. You know, do we have quality time together? Because, you know, that sort of gets a bit busy. So let's, let's just quickly reflect on it weekly. Yeah. And so where I'm getting to is there was another point. We have like five different pillars that we look at on a weekly yeah. and one of them is uh, i wanted to put down like inspiration so i'm thinking yeah. of things like more spiritual or, or whatever things that we can both do together but and then i look at one like inspiration okay and 
I look at that and like what keeps coming back to me and I'm like, I want to go and live overseas again. Where are you thinking? At this time I want to go to, I've been into Italy multiple times, but I want to go and live in Sicily. So like my family's from Sicily. Yeah. Uh, and I want to go and live there for a bit because I want to learn Italian. Right. Okay. And so with that, like we we're talking about with the goals, if I think of the feelings and things that I can get drawn to, that's, that's one that I, I want to achieve. And once I've got, you know, my, my kids, you know, maybe one or two, then, um, then I can go and move over there and do that. Yeah. So that is something that drives me every day to continue you know, creating videos, doing well with my investing, enjoying a good life here because I want to get over there as well at some point when we can. It's it's good because because it kind of shows me your your purpose is is like your family, your you you want to learn about your your roots in terms of the Italian roots that you have. You know you want to learn another language. That's that's all the purpose behind what you do as a trader. Mm. That's that's kind of really that's that that's what I was getting at. So you've just literally you literally summed it up. But in terms of like, do, do you do you still set out with your partner? Okay, this is um the financial goals like do you have a, like a regular date night and all this stuff like so this is all book, do you all book all that out as well because no no uh, don't book it out we've tried but then it's it stresses me out because i'm like well i wanted <laughs> right. to get this podcast done or i want to yeah. get this video done I'm like, but i've got this thing on but what i try and do is just on uh, when the time's there is just go so like what was yesterday we went at lunchtime, I usually like to block this time out. Lunchtime, let's go do something. 11 to 1, that's my block out time. Yeah. Um, let's go do something. And we usually go down the beach or something like that. So, so. basically, she hates me right now because we're doing the podcast uh, at this well, time. Fortunately, she's with a friend and, I don't know, doing their own work day. So right, okay, I work yeah. from home and she works from home too. So. I'm just checking because yeah, I yeah. do not need no, 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 like, is she Italian? <laughs> No, uh, American, American. Ameri- oh, but they're still angry. Nah, <laughs> they're pretty happy people. Yeah, but I know what you mean. I, know what you mean. <laughs> you don't, I don't need to cross that one. Off. Nah, no. Um, so that's that's kind of what we do when it comes to that. And you know, some nights maybe we'll just go have a quick meal or something like that. But again, it comes down to the feeling. Like you can spend time with someone, but if you don't feel like you're actually there with them and you're on your phones or whatever, like the cliche yeah. thing, then what was the point? So is there is there any routines that you can give people as well, like in terms of like how to not get distracted from from their from their goals or or main thing that they're trying to work on, so they can get into that actually because you must get into deep flow with trading to be able to go and. Oh, you'd think so, wouldn't you? Well, um. I'd, 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 I'd hope so. You tell me if I'm wrong. Like, I'm happy to be wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's not about wrong or right. It's like what I what I think I should be doing and what I end up doing is yeah, know, off to yeah. two different things. So. Um, talking about getting into deep flow yeah, and whatnot. Yeah, deep flow in what you do, uh, yeah. Look, I guess the last couple of weeks I tried something different and just giving myself block out times. I've tried block out times in the past and it just, you know, you sort of do it for a bit and then it stops. And so to get in deeper flow, uh, I have to make sure that something is uh, like it resonates with me and it's something that I want to do. And there are obviously going to be times that are, you, you have to do things that you don't want to do. And so I sort of leave those for another period. But in terms of the the, the getting into the flow state uh, I just make sure it's just have distractions off yeah yeah I, I, so you've got no like, I don't know no, how so, to, no social media notifications or anything and in the block out time that's that's the the goal the aim. yeah it's just turn those things off and then that allows me to write the script for the video do a bit more in um, understanding for what it is I need to talk about and then when I go to film I get into flow pretty well when it comes to filming. Because I, I it's your it. passion, right? I, I love turning the camera on and just talking. And sometimes I talk way too much, but I feel like I'm in flow, so I just go with it. Welcome to my world. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's what it is, why you like to podcast. It's, it's, it's good fun. I just like good conversations with good people like yourself where I think that other people can pull value out of it. I think I can pull value out of it. I hope maybe you get some value out of it as well. And I just think that, I just think that these conversations, if you have them without recording them or without documenting them, mm. it's kind of a tra- tra- travesty because you're wasting so many golden nuggets that, that might resonate with someone at some point in their life, you know, and you could just put it out there and it just, it just works all the time. And when people, when people find it, it's the right time for them. It's all good, but sure. that's that's kind of what I'm trying to trying to achieve with this. Is that your legacy for for this? Yeah, so like I, I just think that I just want to be able to obviously like it sounds a bit corny in that, but I just want to be able to help people beyond people that I actually even know. You know, I want I want mm. people to come up to me and say, "Do you know what, Frankie? I listened to this podcast at this time." 
and it changed my life because of this, this, and this, and this reason. And it just makes everything all worth it. It makes the money invested into podcast. It makes your time, my time, and everyone else's time invested into this, and the investment you put into it all worth it for me. And that's that's all that's all this is about. It's not a money play. It's not a passive investment. I just actually enjoy talking to good people like yourself that actually have achieved good shit and are positive and and generally want to go out and help people as well as help themselves. And I just want people to understand that the world is so fucking abundant that we can all just because you're successful, Jason, doesn't mean that tr- Tracy over the road can't be successful just because you're successful do you know what I'm saying and so many people look at the guy in the Ferrari and think he's a wanker because he's got a Ferrari but and there's really, a lot of those around here yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of them but, <laughs> but the you coast. know what I mean yeah, yeah. there is there is, there is. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is just because he's got it doesn't mean that you can't have it and, and doesn't mean what he is thinking is that everyone is lesser yeah yeah you know? yeah that's what I like to do with the, with the channel when you know, people want to know how much money you're making all this sort of stuff and I'm like what, what's the what's the difference you know it's not as a long as, swinging competition no <laughs> as long as you're doing well and you enjoy what you do yeah it's great because i've i've felt that previously as well it's like you know i've asked someone and they haven't earned as much as what i thought they were i'm like oh they're not doing so good but i'm like well did i receive value from them and did i grow and learn from it yeah regardless of the money it's like why is money the only uh yeah you know, the indicator it's of, like, schedule, yeah, uh, of, of, of success of yeah. success yeah. yeah and some people had way more and like oh you know it sort of makes you feel a bit bad but you know that that's you personally what you're willing to do because i get a lot of fantastic information from people who are not interested in investing or uh you know creating their wealth they they are very confident in who they are and what they do yeah and for sure. i value that more so than than other things I just, I just think it's a beautiful thing that you can obviously just get so much information from so many different people. Like you as a trader can go and pull, you can go and watch someone who's really good on mindset and psychology, but you as a trader need that within your arsenal of things that you use. Correct, yeah. So so you can pull so much from him without it just being directly related to tr- to to, to yeah. exactly what you're trying to achieve. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it but it is it is indirectly related. So just for just for a, a, a kind of summary, like give give me. Um, Give me places where people can obviously go and follow you on social media and obviously get access to your YouTube channel and everything like that and all the good content that I know you're putting out there. Beautiful. Yeah, well, look, the YouTube is my name, Jason Pizzino. And I think if you type that in, you'll find it and you'll find it with all the other clickbaity looking thumbnails for the yeah, videos. Yeah, I love the thumbnails, to be honest. I love the thumbnails. Uh, yeah, just, yeah that's, that's all me. I, I'm I a thumbnail a, guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a VA or anything for that at the moment, but yeah, that's that's all the stuff that I do. Uh, I do that from start to finish. Yeah, I don't, I don't hire anyone yet. I'd love to hire someone. So if anyone on it. here is yeah. who wants to learn in investing on the back of Jason, maybe, maybe you reach out and offer him some value. Like if you're a graphic designer who can do real good thumbnails, this is your opportunity to stand up and say, Jason, I want to learn investing. So I'm going to offer you this value at the front end and i'm going to come and do all your thumbnails so they convert like a motherfucker <laughs> and then you could teach me some investing on the back end yeah it sounds bring a sweet some deal. seo with that and some video editing and everything boom exactly if you've got skills you got a contact here but yeah. where, where else where else online uh that's my primary area and then obviously instagram again jason.pazino yeah you can get in touch with me there uh yeah, they're, they're the two two good sources there. And is and if you and if you could give one piece of advice today before you leave this podcast, what would that piece of advice be? Oh, now you put me on the spot. Is this what, mate? I've been doing that the whole podcast. I know, I know. <laughs> I should I should be used to it by now. Um, whenever I do get that question, I haven't thought about it too much. I always go with something that I have felt or thought of just with it, recently. With, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. and the thing that came up today was. Uh, just take time away from things if they're not working out. So I was talking online with my trading group and we were just talking about trading, obviously, and the guys were saying that they they were just overcomplicating their trading. Yeah. And one of them said, uh, the best thing I did for it was just walk away. And then I came back later. I'm like, you know, come to think of it, that's I did have a break. And then when I came back, things became so much clearer. Because, you get, because you're not in it. Yeah. You're not in it. The stuff that doesn't matter, you'll forget this and you just don't use. And then when you come back, the things that do matter, you'll implement again. I love it, mate, because Paul Price says something very similar in a, in a previous podcast. Paul Price was talking about flow. You should definitely listen to that, guys, if you haven't already. Cool. But he, he was saying that you should book out flow blocks, which is kind of what you kind of do with your trading for like – 
hour two hours get into deep flow then go and take like an hour's break or f- or half an hour's break and just fully disconnect from everything phone everything just like what you said and then yeah. get gain your mental clarity back and when you come back to the desk or come back to wherever you're working or your hu- or whatever you're working on you, you've got a new perspective because you're not sat there looking at it like yeah. in, inside the full i look at that as cycles too like my day is broken up in the morning two hours away from the phone three hours i'm in the the zone two hours i'm away again yeah three hours in it, two hours away because I'm training. And then by that stage, it's nighttime and I sort of just ease up a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so that as well, in terms of a cycle, I can't do that over and over again. You yeah. just, then you need to break that up. It's like, all right, I'll do that five days straight and take a couple of days off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, you know, you've know, got to break those up again. So it's just cycles within cycles. But no, I love it. I love it. I love it. And that's some, some epic value drop there, mate. Just thank, again, thank you very much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. And that has been Jason Pizzino, Frankie Lee, and we are out. Don't forget to subscribe to the Frankie Lee podcast.